Hello, in this video we are going to be looking at making our bird fly because at the moment what we have is a bunch of pipes that move, we have land that moves, the pipes are generating as well and we have the bird that's animating looking all good, easily adaptable, you can easily increase the animation speed or decrease it via definition in the definition file but it doesn't fly, there's no collision. So in this video we're going to be covering flying. So the first thing you want to do is go to your definition.hpp as usual. Let's go to the bottom. We're going to add a few definitions. And the first one is, or the first three definitions we're going to add are bird states. So there's going to be a still state, which is going to be at the start of the game when you haven't actually started playing yet. There will be a falling state. So the bird is obviously falling. Then a flying state, which is occurring after you press the screen and it will be flying for x amount of time and we'll be having a hash defined for that as well so hash define bird underscore state underscore still i'm going to set it to one i'll copy and paste this and this is going to be bird state falling not falling falling this is going to be bird state flying but uh, make sure i change the values and we're going to do a hash define gravity as well so this will be what we'll be using to make it go down automatically when we're not flying and a hash define flying underscore speed 350.0f you can modify these values to make them slower or faster and then finally a hash define for the flying duration so this is how long each flight will last so this is going to be 0 0.25 seconds so once you've created all of those definitions you want to go to your bird header so just go over here and in here we've got a couple of methods but we need a couple more we need one for the update the void update i think you guessed it's going to take a float d t and we're going to have a void for tap so this is going to be triggered when the user clicks the screen and let's scroll down we need a few more stuff so we've got the bird sprite we've got the animation frame the animation iterator we've got a clock but you're also going to have a separate clock so this is something to bear in mind you can have multiple clocks though so i actually had this question asked to me recently in real life it wasn't online and somebody was wondering can you create multiple clocks i was like yep and obviously as long as they have a different name you can keep track of different times so movement clock so this will just be tracking the i mean the movement so we can reset the timer and allow the user to tap multiple times and you're gonna have a bird state which will just keep track of what the current bird state is so let's go to the bird cpp file close this part down the sidebar so it's just easy to work with we need to first we're going to set the position of the bird because as you can probably remember it was in the top left we don't want that we want it to be in a better position so underscore bird sprite dot set position and the x position is going to be let me do it and then i'll explain exactly what we're doing so data window dot get size dot x divided by four so we're getting a quarter of the width of the window minus and this is minus uh, that should be ending here so this is minus the bird sprite dot get global bounds dot width divided by two so we want to position the bird 25% of the way along the x-axis but remember the origin starts at the top left so it starts at the left for the x part so we just need to move it back to the left to make the bird look like it's positioned 25% of the way along and for the height part all we want to do is center it in the y-axis so we can essentially copy and paste Feel like there's too many yeah there was too many brackets you can copy and paste this 
and the only change we actually need to make is okay two changes three changes you need to set that to height you need to set this to y but because we're moving it 50 percent of the way along aka the center you just set this to two so we've set the position now now let's set the initial bird state and this is going to be bird underscore state still like so and now if we scroll down the draw method we're happy with that the animation method a-okay with that and now we can start implementing the update and tap methods so we're going to do void bird update and it takes the float dt so we're going to just check for the two different states so this will run when there's or we we're concerned for the update when there's two different states falling or flying so if the bird state is falling really is equal to the bird state then we want to move it down so we want to do underscore bird sprite dot move so we're going to set a x value offset which is zero because we don't want it to move along in the x-axis it will look like it's moving in the x-axis sort of because everything else is moving to the left but the bird isn't actually moving in the x-axis so we are going to put gravity time by dt to make it frame rate independent now we're going to put else if bird underscore state line so if that is equal to the bird state we will copy and paste this and we'll have underscore i mean no underscore we'll have flying speed you might be thinking if you go back to the definition file right here the flying speed and the gravity have the same value the reason we've got two different definitions is because we could easily change the value maybe we think the flying speed should be higher or it should be lower you can easily do that that's the reason we got independent values and yeah let's get back to it over here so that's it for this little part but what we are gonna do is we're gonna check if the movement clock dot get elapsed time dot as seconds if this is greater than the flying duration let's close this down then we know that it's flown enough in the y-axis it's gone up enough and now we can start falling so the first thing we'll do movement clock dot restart like so and then we need to do underscore bird state equal bird state falling and honestly that's it for the update method we just need to do the bird tap method so void bird tap in here we're going to do underscore movement clock Dot restart that's all we're doing and the reason we're restarting it is because you don't know how long the user gonna wait to press on the screen are you one second might be half second might be two minutes so we want to have this clock reset to zero so we get an accurate representation of how much time has passed since an actual click has occurred now we're going to do bird state equals bird state flying and that is it so now we can go to our game.cpp. So if we go, I mean our game state.cpp, my bad. So in the game state.cpp, if you scroll to where we were handling input, and remember I said we'll be using this later on when we was checking if the background have been clicked. And this is what we're gonna be using to check if the screen's been clicked. Because at the end of the day, the background cover the background sprite, I should say, covers the entire screen. And there's gonna be no other buttons on top so this is what we're gonna be de detecting if it has been clicked if it has which you've already got the code it's gonna do bird tap like so but now we also need to call the update method we'll just do that after the animate so bird update passing DT and now we're ready to run this bad boy so let's see what we get Click play. 
Okay, that did not make it fly. It did definitely flip forward. So if I go to definitions, that looks a okay. If I go to the bird.cpp and let's have a look. Ah, that's the problem right there. I've done a positive value, which is moving down. And remember, if you're flying, we want it to move up, which is a negative value. So we're going to do minus flying speed times dt. So now if we run it and click the play button, we can move up and down, which is really darn cool. So let's just see if I can ah, hit the pipes then. Okay, there's obviously a few problems at the moment. One, no collision detection. Two, the bird doesn't rotate as it does in the actual Flappy Bird when you fly. We'll be covering that in a separate video. And another problem is it just starts falling. The pipe starts spawning <laughs> as soon as you start the game. Again, we'll be covering all of those things. And we'll be just making it more like the classic Flappy Bird over the next few videos. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. Also, there will be a GitHub link with this video, which will take you to the source code from every part in this series. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next part.